TerraFlex is always working to provide the best jeeping experience possible. You know, each of us is looking for the best possible lift kit for our needs. TerraFlex offers everything from an inch and a half, that looks nice, leveling kit, to a no holes barred, bring it on six inch long arm with all the bells and whistles. And TerraFlex's new JK8 arm sport kit has been designed as a completely maintenance free system. With control arms that are preset to give us correct caster as well as pinion angles. With the kit being maintenance free, it also makes the install much easier. Before we lift the Jeep, remove the front and rear track bar bolts using a 21 millimeter. It's much easier to remove the bolts before they become all side loaded and bound up when that axle hangs. Lift the Jeep high enough that the axles will have plenty of room to hang, then pull off the tires. The sway bar links are removed using an 18 millimeter socket and end wrench. If you don't have an impact gun and the stud spins on you, just use a 3 quarter inch end wrench to hold it from turning. Keep tooled up with that same 18 millimeter combination and remove the lower shock bolt. Pop the harness and brake lines loose and move to the top of the shock. Remove the upper nut with a 5 8 end wrench. Flat ratchet really helps speed it up as well. I used a 16 millimeter on the painted shaft nut because the 5 8 was a little tight going on. Do the same procedure on the passenger side shock. When you try to put a wrench on that upper shock nut, You'll be a little disappointed to find that it's nearly impossible to do. Just grab a pair of wire cutters or pliers and break away a section of the battery tray molding. It's okay. It's not even a structural part of the tray. If you're strongly opposed to doing this horrific damage to your Jeep, you can spend an hour or two and remove the battery tray from under the hood. We'll wait. With the shock out of the way, we can easily access the brake line bracket that's only used on 2011 and newer Jeeps. Older Jeeps don't have this bracket. They also use a much shorter brake line. To keep the bracket from moving while we pry open the clamp, use a pair of vice grips and clamp the very end of that bracket so that it just won't pull through. Pry open the bracket, being very careful not to pinch or damage the brake line. So the kit includes new brake lines for the earlier model JKs. I recommend keeping the factory brake lines on the 11 and newer Jeeps because it saves all the brake bleeding mess and they work great once that bracket's removed. Once the brake line can be pulled from the clamp, use a 10 millimeter and remove and discard the bracket. Before we can lower the axle, the front drive line needs to be disconnected at the pinion. Use a 15 millimeter. With the new motor in the 2012 JK, there's some changes in the exhaust. If the axle is lowered even a few inches, the drive line will contact that crossover pipe. This section of the install is for the elitist 2012 and newer crowd with the 3.6 liter Panastar motor. The 3.8 liter crowd can skip this entire exhaust section. The exhaust spacers are not included in the kit, so if you have a 2012 or newer JK, you'll need to get them. Lower the crossover pipe by removing the four flange bolts using a 13 millimeter. Next, loosen the clamp at the Y pipe using a 15 millimeter. Now, if your Jeep's been on the road a while, it's probably worth hitting that clamp and bolt with some penetrating oil. We will need to slide the intermediate pipe deeper into the Y pipe for muffler clearance. To do that, use a chisel or hammer and remove that indexing stop. Using a pry bar, spread the crossover pipe wide enough to slide in those exhaust spacers. When we pried the crossover pipe back to install the new exhaust spacers, the intermediate pipe should slide into that Y pipe about a half to three quarters of an inch. If not, use a dead blow hammer and just tap on the back side of the muffler. It'll easily slide it forward. Install the new longer flange bolts. Position the exhaust crossover pipe so that the flanges are seated flush 
tighten the new flange bolts. Tighten the Y pipe clamp and check for clearance around the exhaust system. Back to the front axle. Remove the breather at the axle and carefully lower the axle checking for ABS lines or any other hoses that might be getting stretched. When the axle is lowered far enough, it'll be really easy to remove those coil springs. Remove the spring isolators, but hang on to them. We're going to be reusing them. Remove the remaining track bar bolt using a 21 mm socket and remove the track bar. Use a 10 mm and remove one of the heat shield bolts and just move it out of the way to gain access to that upper control arm bolt. We're going to make sure that there are always at least two arms attached to the axle at all times, just for stability. An 18 mm socket is used to remove the bolt. The nut is a captured nut. Remove the axle side control arm bolt with the same 18 millimeter. Hold the nut with an 18 millimeter as well. The lower side axle control arm bolts require that ubiquitous 21 millimeter on both the nut and the bolt. At the frame side, that same 21 millimeter socket and end wrench is used. Remove the control arm. I just stuck a bolt in the frame side lower control arm and just let it hang. We'll throw in the remaining bolt once that upper arm is in place. Install the new upper arm starting at the frame side and start the nut. As the nut and bracket are moved into place, you'll be able to put light pressure on the bolt and feel it drop into the nut. Then install the axle side bolt and nut. You'll probably find it a little difficult to install the lower axle side bolt because of the arms longer than original length. Move to the passenger side and remove the heat shield or bend it out of the way. Use an 18 millimeter end wrench. The exhaust denies use of an impact on this one and remove that upper arm and install the new heavy duty arm. Remove the lower control arm using a 21 millimeter and install the new arm. It may be necessary to use a pry bar between the axle housing and the arm for alignment due to the longer length. Remaining lower control arm can now be slid into place. Just start the nut. Make sure the breather and locker wiring harness are routed on the outside of the arm. Slide the coil spring spacer onto the jounce tube, followed by the original spring isolator. Caution, make sure you position the spacer and isolator in the correct order. The rubber isolator should be against the spring. Remove the factory bump stop and install the provided extension. Use a little grease to aid in the install of that extension. They can be tight. If you aren't man enough to push the extension on with your bare hands, 
Use the axle housing as a press. Use a block of wood or whatever you can find between the axle and the extension. Raise the axle or lower the Jeep if you're fortunate enough to be using a lift and reinstall the factory bump stop using the same technique. Install the new 3 inch coil. Make sure to orient the spring into its seat. Install the new shock starting at the top using a 916 end wrench. Stack the shock bushings and washers as shown. You'll have a washer, then two bushings, and another washer. Tighten until you can see that shock bushing just starting to compress and bulge out a little. Slide the breather tube down the shock tower to gain some length. Reposition the clamp and reconnect along with the locker harness. On a non-Rubicon JK, you'll need to install the sway bar link part bracket as well as the bullet. Now the bullet has little flats on it for install as well as a jam nut. Both will use a 916. Remove the front body mount nut with an 18 millimeter and install the sway bar link hanger as shown. Well, the axle side sway bar link bullet is installed with the link mount to the inside of the arm and the nut to the outside and the washers against the tab. This Jeep that we're doing the install on is a Rubicon. We just wanted to show you a demonstration of what the less fortunate non-Rubicon owners will need to do for a sway bar disconnect. Slide the link off the axle mount. It'll be pretty tight, but it needs to be so that there's no play. Both sides disconnected, swing the link up until it's pushed into the parking bullet. The Rubicon boys will do as follows. Tap the sleeve into the sway bar link and install the grease fitting. Okay, Rubicon and non-Rubicons need to install that grease fitting. Use a 3 8 inch end wrench. Orient the fitting so that it can be accessed from the front. The link will be installed on the outside of the arm on top and the inside of the tab on the axle. Use the original hardware. There should be a washer on both sides of the bushing at the axle. Tighten with an 18 millimeter at the axle and a three quarter on top. Now we're going to install TerraFlex's stabilizer shock relocation bracket, which really buys some stabilizer shock longevity by moving it up and above the tie rod end. To do the install, we'll need to remove the existing tie rod sleeve shock mount. Remove the bolt from the clamp using a 15 millimeter. Leave the shock mounted to the bracket and swing the shock around and rotate it until it binds up against the axle housing as shown. The shock will hold one end of the clamp and a good size adjustable open end wrench will work great to spread the clamp. Remove the entire assembly. To prep the monster track bar for installation, just loosen the adjusting sleeve using a 3 quarter and a 5 eighths. Start the original hardware on the new track bar on the upper frame side. We won't attempt to install the lower track bar bolt until the Jeep is lowered onto the ground. 
It's a lot easier than fighting to do the install with the axle hanging. Reinstall the four driveline bolts using a 15 millimeter and some Loctite. Moving to the rear, take a little load off the axle. Pop out all the harness retainers that may limit the axle's down travel. Breather line, ABS lines, as well as the park brake cable bracket held on with a 10 millimeter nut. Also remove the brake line retainer bracket on both sides. Just start the bolt back into the frame. We'll reuse it. Use a 10 millimeter socket. With everything and anything that could get pulled in half when the axle drops disconnected or freed up, remove the rear shocks. 15 millimeter on top and an 18 millimeter socket on the lower mount. On the upper mount, the sway bar links will require a 19 millimeter end wrench to keep it from spinning and an 18 millimeter on the nut. The lower takes an 18 millimeter on both the nut and the bolt remove and discard in an environmentally friendly fashion. Lower the axle, or in our case, we'll raise the Jeep. Watch your toes. Yeah, so remove the springs. Remove the upper control arm bolts using a 21 millimeter. Install the new upper arm starting at the frame side. The bolt and captured nut on this bolt is a bit tricky and you'll want the arm to swing freely so you can start that bolt more easily. The arm will orient with the bend to the inside of the Jeep and the long side of the bend at the frame side. Here's a tip. Push the frame side bolt in just far enough that it just starts into the inside of the frame. This will allow the nut and bracket to slide into place and the bolt can be centered and ready to start. There's a small loop on the inside of the frame that the tab on that nut bracket has to slide into. As the nut and bracket are moved into place, you'll be able to put light pressure on the bolt and feel it drop into the nut. With the one upper control arm frame bolt started, the rear bolt wasn't lining up. By loosening the opposite side upper control arm bolts, it slipped right in. Do the same process on the passenger side upper control arm. Both upper arms installed and the bolt still loose, remove the lower control arms using that 21 millimeter. Reinstall the new arm as each arm is removed. When the driver lower control arm is installed, the new track bar bracket needs to be in place on the axle. 
Loosely install the control arm bolt with the bracket in place. Do not tighten. Remove the bolt and spacer from the new track bar bracket and reinstall it in the lower hole. There should be a washer against the head of the bolt as well as on the nut on the back side. Install the U-bolt around the axle tube and just start the nuts and washers. Go ahead and tighten all the track bar bracket bolts. Start with the 21 millimeter control arm bolt. Now we'll just tighten the control arm bolt just to make sure that everything is lined up. We'll loosen it again before we put the Jeep back on the ground. We drop the track bar into the bracket just to keep it from warping when that axle bracket bolt is tightened. This will save some grief dropping the track bar into place later. Next, final tighten the U-bolt nuts using a 3 quarter inch socket. Tighten them each a little at a time to just keep the exposed threads about equal in length. Don't forget to loosen the control arm bolt again. We need to reinstall the original spring isolator on the new spring spacer. A little grease will make it pop right on. The same goes for the back side of the spacer. These spacers are a pretty tight fit. But I've seen those who are able to install them with sheer power. I'm going to use a piece of exhaust pipe and lower the Jeep on it. You'll know it when it pops right in. Install the coil springs and lower spring retainers. Use the provided tool to hold the nut while using a 9 16th flat ratchet on the bolt head. Lower the Jeep a little and install the sway bar links on the inside of the sway bar and the axle bracket. Go ahead and tighten them up. 18 millimeter on the lower and a three quarter with a six millimeter Allen to keep the joint from spinning if needed. Install the rear shocks. If you just start one of those upper bolts and slide the shock into place, it'll make it a much easier install. Use a 15 millimeter socket on the top. and an 18 millimeter end wrench and socket on the lower mount. Go ahead and final tighten them. The brake line drop bracket is installed with the bend away from the wheel. Use the original hardware on the frame bolt and the supplied bolt on the lower bracket hole. Use a 10 millimeter and a 7 16 on the lower bolt. Be sure to check for brake line to frame contact. You don't want to have a continual vibration wear a hole in that brake line. Plug the breather tube back on and drop the track bar back into the bracket, but install the bolt once it's on the ground. Now is a good time to tie up any loose wiring with some zip ties. Lower the Jeep onto the ground at ride height and install the track bar bolts. Now I installed the track bar bolt from the back side just to gain a little more clearance between the spring and the head of that bolt. It's probably not necessary, but I did it just to gain a little. We are installing Terraflex's steering stabilizer relocation bracket. So instead of installing the factory hardware, we bolted the front track bar in place with the new shouldered relocation bolt. Center the front axle by measuring from the spring bracket to a good spot on the tire. Just check both sides using the same measuring points. Adjust the track bar until the distance is equal on both sides. Final tighten all the control arm and track bar bolts. Before you test drive the Jeep, just double check all your brake lines, ABS, locker harnesses, etc. and zip tie them up as required. 
and it's time to straighten the steering wheel. Straighten the steering wheel before you drive the Jeep to avoid a dash full of lights. Visually orient the front tires so that they're tracking with the rear tires just like you're driving down the road. The steering wheel should be crooked at this point. The drag link has an adjusting sleeve near the steering gear. Just loosen the two 15 millimeter bolts and rotate that sleeve until the steering wheel is relatively straight. It really helps to have an assistant during this process. Test drive the Jeep and continue to tweak the wheel until it's perfectly straight while you're driving. Once you get it there, tighten the adjusting sleeve and enjoy.